The phrase banality of evil was coined by political theorist Hannah Arendt in her work Eichmann in Jerusalem to describe the startling ordinariness of Adolf Eichmann, a key architect of the Holocaust. Arendt's observation during Eichmann's trial in 1961 led her to conclude that evil deeds can be committed on a grand scale not only by sociopaths or fanatics, but also by ordinary individuals. Individuals who accept the ideologies of their state without questioning and participate in any ongoing injustice with the energy of a good bureaucrat. To begin with, it is crucial to revisit Arendt's portrayal of Eichmann. Far from the monstrous figure one would expect, Eichmann appeared to Arendt as a bland bureaucrat, a cog in the Nazi machine who coordinated the logistics of genocide with the same detachment with which one might organize a simple business task. The reason we fail to understand evil is because we fail to understand that evil can manifest through ordinary individuals when they ignore personal moral judgment in favor of a collective ideology or authority. Evil comes from a failure to think. It defies thought, for as soon as thought tries to engage itself with evil and examine the premises and principles from which it originates, it is frustrated because it finds nothing there. That is the banality of evil. The banality of evil does not suggest that evil acts are mundane or that they lack seriousness. Rather, it points to the terrifying normality of the individuals who perpetrate them. The unassuming neighbor, the diligent bureaucrat, the obedient soldier. It's the chilling recognition that those who commit acts of evil aren't always twisted villains from the pages of a dark fairy tale, but rather everyday people who are often doing what they perceive to be just another day's work. Arendt's thesis emerged in a post-war world, wrestling with the atrocities of the Holocaust, attempting to comprehend how a civilized society could orchestrate such systematic horror. Yet her insights are enduring as we navigate a modern society still scarred with the evils of war, genocide, systemic racism, environmental destruction and corruption. To understand why evil persists, we must examine the fabric of our social and political structures. In many cases, people involved in evil acts do not perceive themselves as agents of wrongdoing, but as small cogs in a vast machine, exempt from personal responsibility. Consider the modern workplace where individuals may follow orders or company protocols without questioning the morality of their actions. A financial advisor might sell a retirement fund without disclosing its high risks because it is part of a target to meet. Or a corporate employee might ignore environmental policies to cut costs and maximize profits, driven by a culture that rewards such outcomes. The moral implications of these decisions are often obfuscated by jargon, complex systems and a chain of command that dilutes individual accountability. Furthermore, the digital age has introduced new modes of being that allow the banality of evil to persist. With the anonymity afforded by the internet, individuals can participate in or be complicit in harmful actions without the immediate recognition of their consequences. Cyberbullying, the spread of misinformation and the invasion of privacy through data mining are just a few examples of how ordinary individuals can become part of cycles of harm. Despite an increasing awareness of social injustices and the mechanisms that perpetuate them, there remains a significant gap between knowledge and action. In many instances, societies fail to challenge or dismantle the structures that allow evil to thrive. From inadequate justice systems to corporate impunity, from international relations that turn a blind eye to atrocities to economic systems that prioritize profit over people, the institutionalization of such behaviors makes the perpetuation of evil all too easy. The allure of conformity also plays a crucial role. Arendt pointed out how Eichmann was not a psychopath or a sociopath, but rather alarmingly normal. His actions were in line with a broader societal acceptance of hateful behavior. Today, this pressure to conform can be seen in the widespread reluctance to challenge norms and ideologies for fear of exclusion. The desire to belong and to be accepted can often override the moral compass, leading individuals to partake in or ignore the evils occurring in their own communities and beyond. Actions are justified by the pressing need to adhere to schedules, to follow orders, to do what is expected just because it is expected. 
This conformity where questions are left unasked is precisely where evil nests and evolves, unnoticed until its consequences emerge in a stark, often irreversible way. The role of education, or the lack thereof, is significant in understanding the continuation of these patterns. Critical thinking and moral philosophy are not the most dominant part of our educational systems. Without the tools to question, to evaluate and to dissect information, individuals are more susceptible to falling into the roles prescribed to them by an ethically blind society. Arendt herself was a proponent of the kind of thinking that stops and interrogates, that pulls apart the status quo to examine the threads of morality within. But in societies where education is a privilege rather than a right, where it is instrumental rather than transformative, the capacity to cultivate this mode of thought is lost. Media wields enormous power in shaping perceptions and consequently actions. In a journalistic landscape that often values sensationalism over in-depth analysis, the narrative of evil is sensationalized and othered, framed as the act of radicals and outsiders, rather than acknowledged as the possible outcome of everyday decisions and systems. This externalization of evil serves to absolve the collective responsibility, perpetuating the myth that evil is always something outside of us, rather than a potential component of the fabric of normal life. The modern era has seen the emergence of new forms of propaganda and the manipulation of truth that make the ability to judge good and evil more challenging. In a world of fake news, alternative facts uh, and echo chambers of ideology, moral judgment is increasingly difficult. What is evil and what is not can be obfuscated by the noise of conflicting narratives and making inaction or the wrong action part of the new normal. The economy too has its own tales of banality to tell. The relentless pursuit of economic growth often sidelines ethical concerns. From the exploitation of labor to the manipulation of financial markets, the normalization of a profit at any cost mentality provides fertile ground for evil to prevail. As Arendt has shown us, evil may not necessarily result from deliberate malevolence, but also sprout from indifference and the prioritization of one's own immediate benefit over the well-being of others. This touches upon another aspect of the human condition that Arendt has illuminated the paralyzing effect of fear. Whether it is the fear of poverty, of social exclusion, or of existential threats, fear can make the adherence to and perpetuation of harmful norms seem like the only viable option. In its banal form, evil compels individuals to make choices that, while seemingly harmless or necessary at the time, are complicit in larger patterns of harm. But there is still hope. Awareness of the phenomenon is the first step towards combating it. When we recognize our capacity for evil, only then can we also recognize our capacity for good. Activism and social movements around the world constitute resistance against the tides of banal evil. The rise of campaigns for social justice, environmental conservation, transparency in governance, and the inception of new systems of governance reflects a collective awakening to the importance of vigilance and action in the face of systemic evil. These movements demonstrate the power of the individual and collective conscience not only to recognize evil, but to take a stand against it, disrupting the comfort of routine where necessary. In the end, the answer to why there is still so much evil in the world is as complex as the human condition itself. Arendt's concept of the banality of evil provides a framework for understanding how ordinary individuals can become instruments of harm, but it also calls for a deeper examination of the societies we construct and the values we espouse. I'm going to repeat again what she wrote. Evil comes from a failure to think. Only through active and conscious engagement with the moral dimensions of our individual and collective actions can we hope to illuminate and eventually dispel the persistent shadow of banal evil in our world.